Right, good morning. Uh, I have one announcement that uh, according to the schedule, we are supposed to do the midterm test today. As you have presentation uh, for advanced corporate finance, uh, I have postponed it. Right? According to the schedule, again in uh, advanced corporate finance, uh, you have a midterm test next week. Right? So then uh, I have no any other option. Definitely week after next, I'll be taking uh, midterm test for this subject. Right. So you have to ready for that. So week after next, you have uh, present uh, midterm test for this subject. Right. And uh, for advanced corporate finance, you have midterm test next week. Right. There is no any other option. Right. So today I'll be starting uh, cost of capital for my uh, multinational companies. Right. Uh, as you have already done cost of capital for uh, domestic firms. Right. So we have very simple adjustments to do to calculate the cost of capital of multinational companies. Uh, here actually. Uh, the objective is to calculate the, as we did in the uh, cost of capital under corporate finance, we have to calculate the cost of capital of multinational companies using cost of equity and cost of debt capital. And if there is any retained earnings of the uh, MNC, we have to consider the cost of retained earnings as well, right? Uh, the major difference here is that there are so many different risks associated with uh, multinational companies. Therefore, when we calculate the cost of capital, we have to incorporate those additional risks as well, apart from the risk that we consider uh, in calculating cost of capital for domestic firms. Right? So, this is the, actually the central question uh, in multinational companies that uh, what is the required rate of return on foreign project, right? What is the required rate of uh, return on project, foreign project? Should it be higher or lower than the domestic projects, right? So that is one of the major problem uh, which are being faced by the uh, finance managers of multinational companies. <coughs> So let's see what is the solution, what are the solutions for this, how to calculate the cost of capital of multinational companies. Yeah, when it comes to cost of capital of multinational companies, uh, <coughs> like for the domestic cost uh, projects cost of capital, we have to have the cash flow, right? We have we should know the cash flow, right? Usually you know how to calculate the cost of capital. To calculate the cost of capital, we should know uh, actually the cash flow of the project, right? Based on the particular cash flows risk, we decide the particular cost of capital, right? Risk is the risk deter risk affect the cost of capital, right? Uh, but uh, there are two factors, May, basically affiliation of cash flows. What is that? Affiliation of cash flows. Whether these cash flows are 
matching with the particular economies uh, risk or whether these cash flows are more risky than the particular economies risk right this cash flow we have to decide whether these cash flows what is the risk of these cash flows right sometimes these cash flows are from uh, which these cash flows are closely very similar to the uh, economic condition or the state of economies of the uh, local economies cash flow right or this cash flow is facing a higher risk like the world economy right so we have to decide the risk associated with the cash flow right and the other one is correlation between domestic and foreign economy correlation between domestic and foreign economy if the cold uh, if the correlation is very high if there is a higher correlation then the risk would be lower right if there is a higher lower correlation that means the volatility of the cash flows would be higher right <clears throat> therefore we have to decide whether this cash flows have a higher correlation between domestic and foreign economy right so the, uh, in order to decide the cost of capital of multinational companies we have to identify the affiliation of cash flows and the correlation between domestic and foreign economy right if you consider the domestic firms cost of capital and the multinational co firms cost of capital how that would be different from uh, how the multinational firms cost of capital would be different from domestic firms cost of capital if you take multinational company and the domestic firms cost of capital how that would be different from the different how those two would be differentiated how we can see the difference between these two hmm? if you take a domestic firm size of the firm is different from multinational firms right and uh, if you take the multinational firm uh, and the domestic if you compare those two we know that uh, for the multinational firms there are more access to uh, capital markets than the domestic firms right so in that case also they are different and uh, for the multinational firm they can go for the international diversification through that they can find the low cost sources to finance their assets low cost fund sources to finance their assets right therefore uh, we can assume that as they have more opportunities to diversify cost of capital of the multinational firm would be different maybe lower maybe higher than the domestic firms uh, cost of capital and uh, one additional thing that we have to think of the ex exposure to exchange rate risk right and the exposure of the country risk when it comes to multi multinational firms they are open to exchange rate risk they are facing the exchange rate risk and the country risk because they do deal with they do business uh, with international entities international firms located in different countries as a result of that they face a huge risk than local firms right 
therefore when it comes to domestic firms cost of capital and multinational firms cost of capital those things we have to consider size is different and the differentiation uh, the uh, diversification in the for the multinational firm there are possibilities of going for international diversification they have great access to international capital markets and the um, multinational firms when it comes to risk they are facing additional risk of exchange rate exposure exchange rate volatility and they are facing the country risk change in the country location and uh, different political uncertainties economic conditions of those countries are also affecting the cost of capital of multinational companies right so when we differentiate the cost of capital of uh, domestic firms and multinational firms we have to consider those factors right we have to think about the size we have to think about the uh, diversification of opportunities we have to think about the access to other financial markets right we have to think about the exchange rate risk exposure and we have to think about the country risk exposure right so those factors uh, are the this is uh, decisive factors of cost of capital of multinational companies right right in order to calculate the cost of capital we should know what is cost of equity what is cost of debt basically if the company uh, with the particular um, uh, subsidiary has uh, retained earnings so we have to calculate that as well as we know under uh, cost of capital calculation uh, in corporate finance we know that if the firm has retained earning also they are facing a opportunity cost right there is a cost associated with retained earnings as well so that we have to consider that as well when we calculate the cost of capital right so let's start from cost of equity uh, the minimum required rate of return necessary to induce investors to buy or hold the firm stock if we get the minimum required rate of return for the particular asset we will be holding the asset with us right so the cost of equity is the minimum required rate required by the investors right <coughs> cost of capital used to evaluate cost of capital used to value future equity cash flows future equity cash flows what is that required rate of return on equity decides determines the price of the common st uh, stock right the cost of capital used to value the future equity cash flows future equity cash flow determines by the cost of capital that means required rate of return in the market is the price of the required rate of return in the market affects the price of the common shares right so in order to uh, assess this as we use in the uh, corporate finance uh, before we use the same model called capital asset pricing model the required rate of return determines the common stock price to assess this capm is used right so we use capital asset pricing model to evaluate the required rate of return for equity capital in multinational companies right there is no difference the same model capital asset pricing model we use as we did in the uh, corporate finance to evaluate the cost of equity of multinational firms right right according to uh, the capm required rate of return is associated with uh, this equation we know that ri is the equity required rate rf is the re risk free return we took it as the treasury bill rate you can remember right then beta i that is the covariance uh, between uh, market and the individual stock right covariance is the uh, covariance between return on security 
I and the market portfolio, right? Divided by here we are defining beta, right? Variance of market portfolio, right? Market uh, return, market return, right? Variance of return on the market portfolio, right? So this is the beta. Right? So you can remember the same equation we use in calculating uh, cost of equity in corporate finance. Right? So in order to calculate the WACC, weighted average cost of capital of the pro project or the multinational companies, we have to find the uh, cost of each source of finance. So we are still uh, focus on the cost of equity capital, right? So, like we use in the uh, previous uh, calculations, uh, the cost of capital of domestic firms, we use the CapPay model here as well, right? So, the same model I have mentioned here, there is no difference, right? What is this RM minus R, RF? We have defined that RM minus RF. That is the market risk premium, right? That is the market risk premium. Uh, beta is the Right. This is what I told you. This is the risk premium, same as in the normal model that we discussed under corporate finance. This is the risk premium. Right. And this beta, this is how we calculate the beta. There is no difference. The same model we use to calculate the beta in uh, corporate finance. Right.
okay right shall we move on now uh, our objective is to calculate the wacc for the foreign projects right so in order to calculate the wacc we have to calculate the all the cost of all the sources uh, that the project has used to finance its assets right so the the previous formula we used to calculate the the uh, cost of equity right here uh, cost of equity is combined with the after tax cost of debt to yield wacc right ko equals 1 minus l keo is the weighted average cost of capital of the foreign project right 1 minus a, 1 minus l is the parents debt ratio l is the parent debt ratio when you deduct the parents debt ratio from 1 it means this is the same as the weight of equity right same thing that we discuss in wacc and the corporate finance right so l is the parents debt ratio when we deduct right when we this l is the parents debt ratio when we deduct l from 1 the left is the equity ratio the weight of the equity right weight of the equity capital and uh, ke is the cost of equity right l is the debt ratio we can directly take it as the uh, the percentage of debt capital right of the project id is the cost of debt right id times 1 minus t is the after tax cost of debt right right here if you go to the previous one again right in this one in order to calculate the cost of equity right required rate of return in the equity is the cost of equity capital right uh we have to consider project systematic risk right we have to consider project systematic risk right which is me measured by beta right which cannot be diversified which is called undiversifiable risk okay systematic risk right this is called again uh, market risk right market risk this cannot be diversified therefore we call it undiversifiable risk undiversifiable risk and this is measured using beta right right for example now we before we move on to calculating the wacc of the project if the project uh exhibits a lower beta right if beta is lower then for in the domestic firms beta who requires the higher rate of return domestic firm or the project my question is if a multinational project exhibits the requires a lower beta than the 
domestic project right required rate of return of domestic project is higher or multinational project is higher if the mnc is beta is mnc is beta is lower than the domestic beta required rate of return of mnc should also be lower if this is lower weighted average cost of capital also be lower okay so we have to understand that relationship beta lower means the risk systematic risk associated with the project is lower that we are comparing with the domestic project right if systematic risk is lower required rate of return of the multinational company would be lower because we know that the required rate of return of the project depends on the beta or, or the market risk of the project if the market risk is lower uh, required rate of return is also lower right but there is something that we have to remember but we say that if this is lower rrr lower required rate of return of is lower wacc also would be lower but there are some multinational companies right that we have to consider unsystematic risk is very higher right right unsystematic risk is uh, sorry the required rate of return is not necessarily be lower than the domestic product even though they are systematic risk is lower you understand but there are some multinational firms even their systematic risk is lower required rate of return is not necessarily be lower right than the domestic projects right right so we can see that we can assume that this is not the only factor that decide the required rate of return right apart from this there are some other factors that decide the required rate of return right even though they have lower systematic risk they are required rate of return is not low that can happen right this is consistent with the theory that if beta is lower r m r r r should also be lower but it is not always true right it is not always true right due to the risk the market risk premium and rf that can change right the impact of this would depend on all these variables right therefore even though this is lower we cannot say that this always lower right it can increase as well depend on the value of this right right here when we calculate the uh, cost of capital right weighted average cost of capital we have to understand the variables this is same as before what we did uh, use in uh, uh, corporate finance wacc equals cost of equity times weight of the equity plus cost of debt we use kd times 
weight of the cost weight of, weight of the dead capital times 1 minus t right so instead of we we have used l here right yeah l here instead of k 1 minus l instead of we instead of wd we have used l okay that is the only difference, right? So, always we have to take the after tax the, uh, cost, right? There is no any other difference. Okay. Shall we do an example on this? Right. Uh, two cabits employing the WACC weights must be proportioned using market not the book value. Two things that we have to remember when we calculate the cost of capital or WACC of the multinational companies. Uh, the weights must be based on the market value, not the book value, right? If you take the multinational companies, their market value of the uh, shares would be totally different from the book value because it associates the we, when we calculate the market value of the foreign subsidiary, we have to incorporate the, uh, apart from the uh, price of the uh, asset, we have to uh, consider the exchange rate changes as well, right? Therefore, there will be a huge difference in calculate, uh, difference between book value and the market value. Therefore, definitely we have to uh, use the market value of the asset, not the book value, right? If we are to calculate the realistic uh, cost of capital, we have to use the market value, not the book value. Calculating WACC weights must be marginal, reflecting future debt structure. Here, uh, these weights should reflect the target firm's target capital structure, right? Usually, under capital structure, can you remember that we talk about a target capital structure? target capital structure would not be the optimal capital structure of the firm, right? That is only a target. This is the uh, target debt to equity ratio of the firm, right? So that would not be, it doesn't mean that they are using the optimal capital structure. That capital structure would not be optimizing their value, right? That capital structure would not be minimizing the cost of capital and maximizing the value of the firm. But here, all the weights must be weights that we are taking to evaluate the cost of capital must be based on the target capital structure of the firm, right? Reflecting the future debt structure that is the target capital structure, right? We should base the target capital structure of the firm. Right? So, all the weights should be based on the firm's target's capital structure. Anyway, the weights should reflect the target's cap target capital structure. Because we define this target capital structure by analyzing the factors uh, affecting the capital structure of the firm. Right? When, we, when the company decides this ca target capital structure, they consider all the relevant factors uh, uh, which minimize the cost of capital and maximize the value of the firm. Therefore, the capital structure that we consider, the weights that we consider in evaluating the, in calculating the WACC should reflect the target capital structure of the firm. Okay. Right, shall we do this example? A firm with a corporate wide debt to equity ratio of 1.2, an after tax cost of debt of 7%, and a cost of equity capital of 15% is interested in pursuing a foreign project. The debt capacity of the project is the same as the uh, same as for the company as a whole, 
but its systematic risk is such that the required return on equity is estimated to be about 12%. The after-tax cost of debt is expected to remain at 7%. Right? Uh, here, you need to calculate the weighted average cost of capital. Before that, let's read and understand the question. A firm with a corporate-wide debt to equity ratio, 1 to 2. Debt uh, is 1. Equity is 2. Right? After tax cost of debt is given, 1 minus uh, KD minus, KD times 1 minus T is 7%. And cost of equity capital, it is also given 15% and interested in pursuing a foreign project. Right? The project, the debt capacity of the project is the same as for the companies as a whole. Project, there is no difference in the project debt capacity and the company's debt capacity. Right? If there is a difference, we have to consider the difference in risk as well, right? If the debt capacity of the firm is different from the debt capacity of the project, we cannot assume that the project and the firm or the company has the same face the same risk, right? So when we calculate the WACC, we have to adjust. We have to adjust the difference in the risk of two project and the company. You understand that? When we calculate the WACC for the foreign projects, right? So we might be calculating the WACC for the project, not for the company. We cannot assume that the project's risk is same as the company's risk. Might be the project has a higher risk than the company's risk. Then we have to incorporate the relevant risk for the project not the company's risk right so in that case we if we are calculating the project uh, the project's wacc if the project risk is higher than the company's risk we have to incorporate the additional risk faced by the project than the company in order to calculate the right wacc for the project you understand that that difference you have to incorporate when you calculate the WACC for the project. You have to remember that clearly. This is actually one of the major difference in calculating cost of capital for domestic firms and cost of capital for multinational firms. When it comes to cost, uh, the multinational domestic firms, they have only one project anyway, right? They don't have to bother about the location, no the risk of uh, exchange rate, volatility. There is no any other additional risk apart from the given risk, right, for the domestic projects, but for the multinational firms, they have different firms located in different uh, countries, different subsidiaries located in different countries. Those subsidiaries could have different projects, right? So when we calculate the cost for those projects, we should not rely, we should not base the project parent company's risk with the uh, project's risk. Project risk could be totally different from parent company's risk. If that is different, we have to incorporate the right risk associated with the particular project, not the parent company's risk, right? Even if it is a subsidiary, uh, let's say subsidiary one, right? Subsidiary one, right? They might have different projects right project one two project x y and z right so this project risk would be uh, let's say for example uh, 50 percent risk riskier than the parent company this one is 75 percent riskier right this one is only 25 percent riskier right so when we calculate the wacc for these projects right we have to base the required right risk associated with the particular project, right? We have to base the right risk associated with the particular project. Otherwise, we are not calculating the relevant required rate of return of these different projects, right? 
if the subsidiary or the multinational company it could be a parent company right maybe this is parent company it has different subsidiaries this subsidiary is risk subsidiary x subsidiary let's take subsidiary 1 subsidiary 2 and subsidiary 3 right the risk associated with these subsidiaries are different right risk is different this one would be facing a different risk this one would be facing a different risk because the location is different and their currency type is different right due to so many other reasons the risk of these three would be entirely different right so when we calculate the wacc for these three subsidiaries we cannot base the parents risk right if it is not given that it is same as the parents risk if it is different we have to find out the right risk associated with the relevant subsidiaries right so actually calculating cost of capital is entirely depend on depend on the risk associated with the project if the risk of the project is higher the cost of capital would be higher if the risk of the project is lower cost of capital would be lower right therefore this is very important this uh, sentence is very impos important the debt capacity of the project is same as for the company as a whole but its systematic risk is such that required rate on equity is estimated to be 12 percent right so even that even their debt uh, capacity is same as the firm their systematic risk is different and required rate for the project is 12 percent which is different from this 15 percent okay the after tax cost of debt is expected to remain at seven percent right so before you do the example you have to analyze the given uh, figures right so shall we do the calculation now question number one what is the project's weighted average cost of capital how does it compare with the parents WACC? Right, uh, we actually have it right. Yeah, Vitanagi, you have told that uh, you have uh, written here that domestic company is higher. Uh, Virakodi or Vitanagi, have you tried the calculating the cost of capital?
right? What is the project's weighted average cost of capital? Anybody got the answer? Right, have you done it? Hmm? Anybody got the answer? Right. What is the weighted average uh, cost of capital of the project? Right. We have uh, in the question, which equation we have to use? Question, all the details are given, right? We just have to plug the values. Uh, equation means? I we are calculating the cost of capital of the project equals to 1 minus W or you can use 1 minus L whatever right times KE prime right there is a reason to use that prime right plus I will explain that W times KD or let's take ID whatever if you take KD there is no much difference right ID ID times 1 minus T right T is the tax rate Okay, give me a minute, please. Right, uh, tell me more. Right, we discuss the components of. Uh, cost of capital of a multinational company. Now, uh, shall we do this example again? I know there is a equation is given for the calculation. Here, WACC for the project, K1, OKI, whatever, right, is equal to KO, right, 
that is the WACC of the parent, right? Minus A is defined here. A is what A? A is this is the weight, right? E J E is the equity capital. E is the equity capital. Right? Equity divided by I is the total investment. Right? That is the total capital. Total capital divided by E. This is actually the weight. Weight of equity. W V. Right? So B represent the weight of debt capital. W D. V as we took in the uh, W A C C calculation in corporate finance. A is equal to the weight of equity b is equal to weight of debt which is debt capital divided by total capital which is i right okay now we have weight of debt capital weight of equity capital right and the cost of equity is ke we have already defined that minus ks is the what is ks cost of retained earnings cost of retained earnings right cost of retained earnings cost of equity minus cost of retained earnings minus b times b we have defined that is the wd right cost of debt capital id times 1 minus t times if what is if hmm? what is if expected after tax dollar cost of foreign debt Right, expected after tax dollar of foreign debt. Okay, cost of debt capital minus expected after tax dollar of foreign debt. Dollar cost of foreign debt. right so the, this is different from this is actually the weight of weight of dead dead capital times cost of dead capital right this is different from the one that we have taken in the previous calculation of wbcc there we have to adjust the cost of foreign debt after tax cost of foreign debt capital also we have to incorporate there right so you have to remember the equation cost of a project is equal to you can't see the presentation can you see it now can you see it now all right okay i was explaining the components of wbcc uh this is the k1 o whatever k i o whatever is representing the cost of capital of the project right that is equal to wbcc of the parent which is uh, 
right? This is the WACC of the parent KO and cost of equity minus cost of retained earnings KS minus B, right? Weighted average. So this B is the weight of dead capital. This part represents the cost of dead capital, right? From the tax adjusted debt uh, cost, we have to deduct the cost of foreign debt, expected after tax cost of foreign debt. This could be the adjustment for the exchange rate change, right? This could be the adjustment for the exchange rate gain no loss, okay? I said for the foreign companies uh, or the multinational companies cost of capital, we have to adjust the exchange rate gain no loss as well right so this if represent that okay if the foreign subsidiary has borrowed money from uh, local or money from uh, uh, outside the company they have to pay interest and they have to bear a cost call exchange rate gain no loss right so when we calculate the cost of capital we have to incorporate that cost as well this could be a cost or this could be a gain okay now shall we do this example a new foreign investment requires 100 million dollars in funds 20 million will be provided by parent company funds and 25 million dollars will be uh, uh, 25 million by retained earnings in the subsidiary and dollar 55 million through the issue of new debt by the subsidiary the parents cost of equity is 14 percent and its after tax cost of debt is five percent Firm's current debt ratio, which is considered to be optimal, point optimal is point three, right? New investment is hundred million, twenty million provided by the parent company. Different sources of funds are given. Total investment is given, right? So we have to calculate the cost of capital. Of the foreign, uh, of the parent, right? What is KO? Have you done it? Have you? Can you try it? The parent's cost of equity is fourteen percent, and the after-tax cost of debt is five percent. Everything is given directly, and the debt-to-equity ratio is also given. That's very simple. KO. KO equals to cost of equity 14 percent point one four times they are considered to be the uh, current debt ratio is 30 percent right optimal debt ratio is 30 percent means equity ratio is 70 right debt is 30 equity is 70 the balance should be equity plus <coughs> cost after tax cost of debt is 5% 0 0.05 times 0 0.3 right so this is the cost of capital of the parent company 14 times 14% times 70% plus 5% times 30% Okay, did you get the answer? Silva, did you get the answer?
clear up for you so with on again what is the answer eleven point three is that right eleven point three okay okay both of you got eleven point three so I assume that it is the correct answer right so eleven point three percent is the cost of capital of the parent right K O is equal to eleven point three right shall we move on there is no problem with this it is uh, everything is given directly right you have to only multiply from the weight weight of each source of finance right so part two this is you have to read this very carefully right so here in this question we will be applying all the uh, concepts that we learn under uh, cost of capital of multinational companies right this project has a higher systematic risk and require a higher return of higher rate of return of 16 percent on new parent equity right so that word new parent equity is very important and six percent on new parent debt incremental tax of eight percent on repatriated earnings what is the cost of retained earnings what is the cost of retained earnings this repatriated earning is also another word to retained earnings cost of retained earnings we have i have i think uh, shown you the equation as well equation for the retained earning is k e times 1 minus t right K E times 1 minus T. K S is equal to K S is the retained earnings which is equal to K E times 1 minus T. Right? K E is 16% which is given. Right? This is 16%. Tax rate is incremental tax of 8% on repatriated earnings that means for this one we have to pay a tax of 8% so the cost would be 1 minus 0 0.08 right 16% times 1 minus 0 0.08 is equal to 16% times 1 minus 0 0.08 14.72 14 14.72% okay that is the cost of retained earnings right shall we move on that is easy nominal lc rate of interest b 20% with an anticipated average annual devaluation of 7%. Right? 
So you have to incorporate this devaluation here when you calculate the cost, right? So we said that for the foreign uh, subsidiaries, foreign uh, uh, cost, when you calculate the cost of capital for multinational companies, this is some additional thing that we have to consider apart from the other things that we consider, other risk associated with the domestic cost of capital, right? So there is a devaluation of 7%. With a foreign tax rate of 40%, the 40% uh, the what is the, the is addition that you have to call that one. Right? Foreign tax rate of 40%, what is the expected after tax dollar cost of the LCD? Nominal letter of credit rate of interest B 20% with an an anticipated average annual devaluation of 7% with the foreign tax rate of 40%. What is the expected after tax dollar cost of the letter of credit debt? Interest rate is 20%, right? Interest rate is 20%. We know that we have to, this is the simple way of calculating cost of debt capital in, right? Uh, cost of, let's take KDOI is equal to, right? Uh, nominal interest rate is 20%, right, 0.20, okay. From this, normally when we multiply this from 1 minus T rate, we get the actual cost of capital for the dead capital, actual cost of dead capital. But here, there is a devaluation of the as <coughs> devaluation of the uh, currency, right? So how to incorporate this? to incorporate this. This is the normal way of calculating cost of lead capital. KD minus 1 minus KD times 1 minus T. So, apart from that, we have to calculate, uh, uh, multiply this from the weight as well. According to this example, 30% is the uh, equity capital. So 30%, sorry, 30% is the debt ratio, debt capital. So we have to multiply this from 3, right? And from this, we have to deduct 0 0.07 to incorporate the devaluation of the currency. Okay? So you get here. What is the answer? Did you get the point?
what is the answer you get 5% is that right Five percent is not the answer, I think. Did you get the answer? Minus 3.4, it couldn't be. Twenty percent times one minus t is uh, one point one two, right? Times I think it is 1.5 percent. Is that right? So this is what we have used in. Uh, can you remember the in the equation? I don't know whether this calculation is right. So this is the one that we. Uh, I will show you. I think we have made a mistake by using the uh, misreading the yeah here in this one I will delete this one right so here you don't you should read the brackets properly right one minus t times d minus this one should be multiplied from this. Okay, so we have first we have to multiply 0 0.6 from 0 0.2, then deduct 0 0.07. Okay, then that should be multiplied from 0 0.3. Okay, it is. Okay, this is what we have. Uh, uh, we have been calculating this part. Okay, this is the one we are calculating, right? So it should be 0 0.15, 0 0.015. Okay, did you get that? 0 0.015 that means 1.5 percent okay
Okay. Did you get this answer, anyone? Itana again? Okay. Right, next one, calculate the project's WACC. Right, that is the actually hardest part in this question. Right? Uh, project's WACC, don't forget that. Before we calculated the parents' WACC, which we took the answer 11.3 or something. Uh, I don't know, I don't remember. Yeah, it, it was 11.3 something, right? The parents uh, WACC was equal to 11.3. Now we have to calculate the projects, particular projects WACC, right? Which is equal to equation. Here the equation, I have substituted these figures to the equation as I did not discuss the equation before in this class, right? So here I will explain the equation. From here it starts. Right? What is the equation? Here we have KO. Right? We are calculating projects. Right? Cost of capital. WBCC. What we do? We deduct some figures from parents' cost of capital. Then we get projects cost of capital right ko is 11.3 we have already found this figure 11.3 we calculated in the first calculation right in under part 1 we calculated 11.3 right that is the parents cost of capital ko plus we should have to incorporate the risk uh, change in cost of equity capital due to this project the parent is facing an additional risk right parent risk is different from the project risk right if there is a difference here in the question it says that Parent issue 16% new equity, right? Here the equity cost is only 14% for the parent. Because of this project, they are facing a equity risk of equity cost of 16%, right? So here in this question, when we answer this, we have to adjust if this investment change the parents risk right we have to adjust the impact of that additional risk on cost of equity capital do you understand this particular investment has changed the parents risk right therefore we have to adjust the change in parent risk to the equity capital that is why I said instead of KE, we take here KE prime. Right? KE prime. Not KE bar, KE prime. KE prime. Right? K, not KE, KE prime. Right? From that, we have to deduct the cost of equity of the firm that they faced before. Okay? You understand why I have taken KE prime and KE? This is the new cost of equity faced by the firm, faced by the parent because of the new investment, because of the new project. That is why I use KE prime here. Right? So this is the old cost of equity 
already faced by the firm. Right? Now we have to multiply this from 1 minus L. 1 minus L is the weight for the equity capital. You understand? If you have any questions, please interrupt me. This is a bit difficult, a very long equation. Same equation we have expanded for the situation that uh, the company has different risky projects. Right? We have to multiply this from 1 minus L. There is no difference. That is, we are multiplying this from the weight of dead capital. Okay. Okay. Minus A. You know what is A? A is E divided by total investment. Right? A is E divided by total investment. It is same as this one. Now, this is actually the old investment. Right? In the question, it says that this is 70%, this is 3%, right? Uh, this is three, at least three percent, and this is hundred. Then this is going to be you have to multiply this from point seven, right? This A is the new equity percentage of the firm. Let me show you that. It is the old, sorry, this is the firm's parents' equity, right? So, they have 100 million funds, right? They have retained earnings, 25 million, right? 55 million would be new debt, okay? 55 million would be new debt. So we multiply this from A times KE prime minus KS. KE prime minus KS. This is the retained earnings. KS is the retained earnings. What we are doing here? We are calculating the cost of retained earning and multiply that from the weight. Weight for the retained earnings. Right? I will move this actually to the uh, whiteboard. Right? So then it's easy for you to understand and it would be more clear. What I wrote, we are calculating projects cost of equity, cost of capital, P to KO, right, 11.3 we are going to take here, plus we have taken K prime, KE prime, right, KE prime minus KE, the difference between two cost of equity is new one and the old one, right, and we multiply this from 1 minus L, right, in order to incorporate the weight for the equity, right, then B minus A times KE prime minus KS. KS we have already found, right, KE prime minus KS. Okay, then minus Dead capital B, right? B is equal to 55%. It is given, right? Out of 100 investment, 55% would be equity. 55%, right? B times, we have new cost of equity. 
sorry the difference between old and new what is that difference between old and new it was cost of equity cost of sorry cost of debt capital okay we are here uh, cost of debt capital in the question it is given that parent equity uh, uh, 6% on new parent debt if they are going for the new debt capital they have to incur new debt capital is going to be let's take uh, idn new minus id old right the difference between old and new equity we have to adjust for the cost of capital okay did you understand how i have taken this so k i is equal to k o is we have already calculated 11.3 0.113 right plus k e prime is 16% it is given in the question 16% minus k e again given 14% right 1 minus l is 7% right minus the cost of retained earnings right so what is a a is the total investment in uh, total retained earnings divided by total investment total retained earning is 25 divided by 100 right cost of equity is 0.16 ke prime is 0.16 same as here minus ks we calculated 14.72 0.1472 0.1472 minus b is again the percentage of or the weight of debt capital in the new project they are going to incorporate 55 uh, million of debt capital right 55 million divided by 55 million divided by 100 million right times new cost of uh yeah new cost of equity is 0.06 and old cost of equity we have calculated 1.5 according to my answer right i don't know whether it is wrong uh, 1.5% yeah idn is new cost of debt which is 6% 0.06 This is point zero one five. Point zero one five. This is same as the one. This one. This is the one we have calculated, right? I have taken here, right? So when you solve this one, you get the cost of capital of the project. what actually we have done what actually we have done for the parents cost of capital we have adjusted the difference in the each sources of finance difference of the cost of each sources of finance right difference of the each sources of finance
I don't know what is the answer. You should get around, uh, I don't know. You can calculate and find out what is the cost of capital of the project. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Ah, it is, answer is there. Ah, uh, uh, here I have taken point zero four two. I don't know whether this, this should be anyway, the answer we got for the, uh, for this part. Right? So they, maybe my answer is, not right, right? Answer should be then 0 0.042. I don't know, right? You have to check with this answer whether this is 0 0.042 or 0 0.015. I don't know. You have to check it. You have to calculate this answer for this. It is not 5%, it is not minus anyway, right? Right, now uh, final one, uh, part 5, calculate the parents WACC in the absence of retained earnings and foreign debt. It is given here, right? If there is no retained earnings and foreign debt, the parents WACC would be, answer is 13%, how we get that? 16% times 7%. And six percent times sorry, sixteen percent times seventy percent, and six is the new projects debt capital cost times weight on debt capital. If there is no uh, foreign debt or retained earnings, we have to take the new rate of cost of equity and cost of debt times the parents old debt to equity ratio which is 70 to 30. Equity is 70, debt is 30. Okay, so parents in the absence of retained earnings and debt capital, parents WACC is 13%. All right. Any question? Do you have any questions? We shall move on then. Yeah, these things uh, actually you can understand, read and understand. Uh, to calculate the WACC of the project using WACC of the firm, various adjustments needed to be done. That is what we did in the previous calculation. The alternative is to use all equity discount rate. To calculate the all equity rate, we rely on CAPEP. Again, in calculating the uh, cost of capital, cost of equity capital, we always use uh, CAPEM, right? There is no difference.
ओके वाई वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट दिस इक्विटी रेट अगेन the all liquidity cost of capital for foreign projects all liquidity means the firm has no dead capital right if the firm has no dead capital still we have to calculate the wacc right so for the all liquidity firms uh, we can assume that the project dead capital would the project cost of capital would be equal to the parents equity capital subject to that the both parent and the project is facing the same risk right if the project risk is similar to the average risk faced by the firm then we can say that this beta is equal to project beta is equal to firm's beta right if it is not we have to adjust the beta did you get my point if the project beta project is risk faced by the project the risk faced by the project is different from the parents project risk we have to adjust the beta if the parents risk is same as the project risk we don't have to adjust the beta we can take the beta as it is given in the parent right so to calculate the project beta we need to uh, estimate the beta again if the beta of the parent uh, if the parents risk is different from the project risk right so beta represent the risk of the project right if the risk is different we have to adjust the beta we cannot rely on the parents beta if we rely on parents beta and calculate the risk of the project we will not be taking right decisions our cost of capital would be different then uh, the decisions that we take on cost of capital would be definitely wrong right therefore we have to estimate the beta if the risk faced by the project and the parent is different did you get my point if the risk faced by the project and parent is different we have to calculate separately the beta for the project right we cannot rely on the beta of the parent right anyway when we calculate or estimate the beta none of the firm in the world cannot estimate the beta with a great accuracy it would be definitely based on some assumptions right so it would not be reflecting the right systematic risk associated with the particular project right anyway we have to uh, at least calculate the approximated beta right for example suppose that a foreign project has a beta of 1.15 the risk free return is 13% and the required rate on the market is estimated at 21 calculate the cost of capital of the project so it is very easy this same as calculating the this is an application of capm right you just have to plug those figures to the capm so you get the answer 22.2% right estimation process of beta if the project is similar to the average project select by the firm beta of the project is equal to the beta of the uh, firm right so right uh so this is how we calculate the cost of capital right cost of equity to transform beta e to beta star we should separate the effect of debt financing as i discussed before using the hamada equation we said that we can separate the 
equity uh, unlevered beta and the levered beta right so using this example this is equation for the hamada this equation is introduced in hamada equation hamada equation modeling so they are it separates the beta of equity and of beta of equity from beta of a levered firm beta of unlevered firm firm and the beta of levered firm can be separately identified using this equation right so we can use this equation to find out the beta of a separate project which is facing a different leverage okay if the debt to equity ratio change it affects the beta as well therefore company leverage affects the systematic risk of the company because when the firm is bearing higher when the firm is having higher amount of debt capital in the capital structure uh people are expecting higher equity capital the shareholders are expect, expecting higher return for their investment right uh did you get my point if the firm is having uh debt capital in the capital structure that means equity shareholders of the particular firm is facing a higher risk right if the firm has no debt capital in the capital structure equity shareholders expect a higher required rate of return they are required rate of return for will be increasing due to the debt capital in the capital structure because they are bearing a higher risk right therefore systematic risk this is why there is a difference between levered beta and unlevered beta levered beta is always higher than the unlevered beta right because shareholders invested in levered firm is bearing a higher risk than the shareholders invested in i mean the share the investors invested in unlevered firm right therefore we have to adjust that difference when we calculate the cost of equity right from the systematic risk or beta coefficient we can do that adjustment using this equation right example if a firm has uh, stock price of stock price beta of 1.1 the debt to equity ratio of 0.6 and the marginal tax rate of uh 34% calculate all equity beta what is that all equity beta this is actually um, we have to calculate the all equity beta that means that the given data is levered beta levered beta is equal to unlevered beta times uh, what is the equation 1 minus one minus t times One plus one minus t times one plus one plus one minus t times d over t, e, right? So we have all the details. We we have to find the. Ah, uh, we have to find the unlevered beta. Then we can rearrange this equation. we need to do bu is equals bl is 1.1 uh, divided by 1 plus 1 minus t is 0.66 right times d over uh, debt to equity ratio is 0.6 right so this is the answer for unlevered beta all equity beta means this firm has no 
debt capital. If they, the firm has no debt capital, we call it a all equity firm. So all equity firm has a all equity beta, right? So there are systematic risk is small. This answer should be smaller than 1.1 because we are dividing numerator from a from something. Then we get a low answer for this one. Answer should be lower than 1.1, right? So this is how we calculate the uh, unlevered beta or all liquidity beta. Okay. Yeah, when we calculate the discount rate for uh, foreign investment, this depends on systematic risk and the uh, diversifiability, uh, systematic risk and the unsystematic risk, right? What is systematic risk? Which is, that is the risk which cannot be diversified, right? So if the, uh, uh, here, if you read this, you can understand this is same as the systematic risk and unsystematic risk we uh, discussed in the uh, previous session, lessons in corporate finance. Foreign projects in non-synchronized uh, non economies should be less correlated with domestic markets. Uh, less developed countries have greater political risk but offer higher probability of diversification benefits. Yeah, when you take calculate, we are talking about multinational firms, cost of capital, right? So it is very difficult to estimate the cost of capital for multinational firms, right risk associated with those sources of finance, right? When we calculate the cost of capital for multinational firms, we have to incorporate all the risk associated with different sources of finance, right? When we move on to, a, a, let's say, for example, parent companies in well-developed uh, country, and they have some subsidies located in less developed countries, right? So those less developed countries, it is uh, uh, known that they have a higher political risk, right? So when we calculate the risk associated with the business, we have to incorporate that political risk as well, right? So even though they have more opportunities for diversifying their portfolios, still we have to incorporate that systematic risk associated with the uh, investments, right? So in that case, so this is not the easy job actually. We have to calculate the right risk associated with each project located in different countries, right? Right? I think you can understand this, right? What do you understand by this diversification benefits? They are facing very greater uh, risk of uh, political, great amount of political risk, but probability of drive, uh, they are uh, getting a higher probability of, uh, I mean, they have a higher probability of diversifying their portfolios. If you take uh, in practice, US countries, uh, US, uh, US, I mean, US uh, companies have not diversified much because they have located most of their investments uh, in their region. They are, have not globally diversified, right? Therefore, for the less developed countries are facing huge, uh, they are entertaining huge benefit of diversifying their businesses in other countries. They are already parent company is already in a uh, more risky environment and they are moving less risky uh, locations, right? But uh, for the US companies and other developed countries, they are trying to always diversify within their region, right? So therefore, they will not be, if that particular something happened for the particular region, uh, it will be 
a huge uh, disadvantage for the companies, for those multinational companies. Why? You can remember that in 2010, there was a huge uh, uh, economic crisis, uh, economic recession happened in the UK and other European countries, right? Because it started from US, right? And uh, uh, the impact of that was much bigger for those countries than other small countries, right? If they have diversified uh, in their uh, investment in other countries, they will not be suffering that much as they did, right? If they have uh, invested in other countries as well, if they have diversified their portfolio, or, uh, and invested their money in other countries as well. They have diversified, they have gone to the international market, but they have limited their investments to the same region, right? Therefore, the impact of, the bad impact of that uh, recession was very huge for those multinational companies, right? Issues in estimating cost of capital for foreign projects find uh, firms publicly rate, traded that share similar risk characteristics. So when we estimate the cost of capital for foreign projects, we have to, it is very difficult to find out the risk, particular uh, risk faced by the project, right? So sometimes we might be based on the similar companies face the same characteristics, risk, risk characteristics, which is not, which would not be the uh, case, or which, not, not, which would not be reflecting the right risk associated with the particular project, right? So that is a problem. Use the average beta as a proxy. Sometimes you might be using the average beta of the region or average beta of the particular industry as the proxy uh, when we estimate the beta, which is also not reflecting the right uh, risk associated with the particular project, right? How should country risks be incorporated in the cost of capital? This is, this is a problem. When we move uh, into the international business, we have to, the firms will be facing different risk, right? So this is a huge problem that uh, they face how they differentiate the different countries' risk. If the different country is higher, if the different country risk is higher all over, it is, it depends, right? So we don't know how to incorporate the particular country's risk when we estimate the cost of capital of the particular project, right? Yeah, in principle, we can use the correct approach, right? Uh, if we assume that the multi uh, multinational in question is a US multinational with investors who are globally, I have uh, explained everything using an example, right? Uh, who are globally diversified, then in principle, the beta of the foreign subsidiary should be estimated with respect to a global market portfolio and global market risk premium should be used, right? So theoretically, it says that if the multinational company is uh, globally diversified, then we should use the global market uh, risk premium to or global market portfolio and uh, global risk factor when we estimate the uh, beta, right? Yeah. When estimate the beta, the currency is also affecting to the systematic risk, right? If we don't know whether currency is uh, the cash flows are measured in dollars or pounds or rupees or franc or whatever, right? So we have to use the right risk-free rate, right? If we take US Treasury rate, that would not be reflecting the right risk-free rate for a Sri Lanka, for Sri Lanka, right? So for the uh, I mean, uh, the sake of uh, making somewhat similar estimation, we can take U.S. Treasury rate as the uh, risk-free rate, right? But this is not 
uh, suitable for a country where it is located out of the particular region right if the particular country is close to the us region then it's okay to use the us treasury bill rate but there are arguments that practically uh, theoretically we can use this as the us treasury rate as the risk free rate yeah here there are so many arguments in practice us investors are not globally diversified as i mentioned before us investors are diversified only in their region right that is a problem when we consider the uh, okay right so as us investors are not globally diversified so in practice it is not uh, reasonable right it is not uh, actually realistic to take it's realistic to based on uk companies please read this you can understand uh, everything is i have everything i have given in detail here from the, this point onwards uh, you have to read on your own right okay, i'll stop now remember that next week you have the uh lecture again week after next you have the midterm test for this subject and next week remember you have the midterm test for the uh, uh, corporate finance advanced corporate finance all right then